Hey, would you like a Neil Bryan business card? There you go. It's great. Lots of great information. Biggest Neil Bryan fan gets a free wedgie. Hey guys, Neil Bryan here, and I am going to talk to you today about my studio setup. Uh, you guys don't see very much of it because it's usually just me uh, in front of a green screen and I put something else behind me. So most of what you guys see as far as the production goes, uh, as far as the actual filming, is just me. So I'm going to give you a behind the scenes view today of what it looks like in the Neil Bryan studio and kind of how I have it set up. Now keep in mind, I'm not a professional, uh, and I have done things on a budget. Uh, at this point, uh, all told, I've probably spent around $1,000 over the course of the last six months, which is probably a lot more money than I should have spent on a hobby uh, that doesn't really provide a lot of return, but that's beside the point. I enjoy doing it, uh, but you will find most of the things that I did were not very expensive. Uh, a couple of $100, $120, $150 items, but most of it was under $100, and I was able to put it together piecemeal. So I'm going to show you my studio setup, kind of how I did it on a budget, uh, and you might even be able to adjust things even further down uh, if you're like me and it's just a hobby and you don't have a whole lot of income for it. So let's get into it. Um, first off, I don't, I wear glasses and so sometimes it's a bit of a struggle. I have contacts, I don't usually wear them, but the problem is when I wear my glasses during filming, a lot of times the lights will reflect off the glasses depending on which way that I'm looking. So I often try to film without them, uh, which makes it tough sometimes with my gaming, uh, although my computer is pretty close to me. Another thing that I do when it comes to the computer is right now I have a computer in front of me. It's right here. I just put it out a little farther, and then I extend the back down so that it's off the screen, so that typically you guys aren't going to see my computer. Uh, also keep my drinks out of shot just to give it a cleaner and more professional look. So that's as much as I can show you from here. Let me get behind the camera. How to do a studio. Lots of Dr. Pepper. Okay, so without me in the frame, basically all you're gonna see is my green screen. Uh, I typically will center up my camera and my shot and then I will uh, zoom in just enough that everything else is out of frame. But if you zoom it completely out, you begin to see a lot more of the behind the scenes workings uh, and what's going on here. Now the room itself is not particularly large. Um, you. I have a studio setup video where Captain McFrosty and myself uh, put a lot of the equipment up. You can, you can get another view of it from there, and I will link it uh, right now. So if you want to check out that video, you can. I'll also put it at the end of this video in case you want to finish watching this video first. You can check that out. So um, as you can see, we basically, we've got this fabric not very well put up all over the walls, which I kind of pleated. I just made some some curves in here. This is just quilt batting, but I use thumbtacks and put it along most of my walls. See if I can do this without making you too dizzy. Um, almost all the way up to the green screen, and you can see it up on the ceiling as well. And basically just cut it around as best I could. Got a closet right there with some of my equipment in it. Um, all the way around to here to basically make all of my flat surfaces have something on them uh, except for the stuff right up in my filming area because sometimes when, when I'm not using the green screen I will actually film like to the corner right there so I don't go all the way up to that. The quilt batting uh, for this office which is about uh, probably 15 by 20 I mean it's a fair sized room it's not huge for a studio um, but it's you know obviously sufficient for what I use it for um, well, mostly. There's some days I wish it was a little bigger. But, you know, it fits my green screen. It fits me in there. It, it, it works out for a lot of what I do. So roughly, a, you know, a 15 by 20 room. And I used about five things of quill batting. So about $60 in quill batting is what I used to do the entire room. Uh, now, obviously, if you're going to go more professional, the... Uh, um, the egg foam uh, is much more popular, but I found it to be quite a bit more expensive, especially with wanting to cover as much as I did. A lot of people won't mess with the ceiling, especially if they have a carpeted floor, because there's not a lot of echo that'll come back between those. So anyway, that's what I did for the soundproofing. And the nice thing about that soundproofing is um, I actually have, I'll show you right now, a setup for recording, which I sometimes use, especially if I'm doing voiceover work. Um, I've got a small mixer and this mixer was kind of expensive I think it spent about $120 on it um, mix 12 effects it is uh, I think a Mackie 
is the brand. Uh, and it basically, it gives me potentially eight channels. I typically only use about four of those at the most. Uh, as you can see here for my recording, when I'm doing voiceovers, I only use one. Uh, and then I've got this, uh, this microphone here, which cost me about $70. This is a MXL 770. Uh, and it came with this groovy little holder, uh, although I did buy the stand myself as a desktop stand, and then I bought the uh, the, sp the spit screen. Can't remember what it's called right now. So I just look like an idiot. But um, yeah, so I spent about seventy dollars on that microphone, and, and and I think it's a hundred or hundred and twenty for this mixer. And then of course you have to buy a few odd cables here and there, and some adapters, because like a lot of the computers, if you're like me using a laptop or a desktop, uh, you're going to need. A quarter inch to eight inch, eight inch adapt, uh, eight inch adapter to be able to plug in. So you're going to have to buy a few accessories there. And if I'm typically just doing a voiceover bit of work uh, where you don't have to see my face, I made a little, um, basically a sound studio, a little mini sound studio uh, that I could use for my microphone. I'm going to show you right here. All right, basically I just got one of those uh, tubs from Walmart. I don't remember the exact size of this one. Uh, and then I got some spray adhesive and more of my quilt batting. And I just covered the majority of the interior with that quilt batting to, again, reduce any kind of echo that might be in there. My microphone then just sits right on the bottom there. And I have a uh, small, uh, basically, recording cubicle uh, that is absolutely beautiful. When I, when I run this through... Uh, my mixer and into my laptop, and I typically use Audacity for editing, uh, I get very clear, crisp, beautiful recordings uh, with this MXL 770 and this uh, this recording setup. Again, incredibly inexpensive. Um, I spent almost, you know, next to nothing almost on this thing to, to be able to have this, and it's been very handy for my voiceover work. I don't usually do, uh, I know some people like to do gameplays, and then they'll afterwards, they'll do kind of a commentary voiceover of that recording. This is something that would be remarkably useful for something like that. Okay, so that's basically my sound recording. Um, now let's get to the actual studio and let's talk about the green screen and the lighting. Now, as you can see here, I have a, a three-point lighting system. Uh, and I found this on Amazon for, I believe it was $120. Uh, they're actually 900 watts each. There's four 225 watt bulbs in each of these. So that's a 2700 watt lighting system. Now for lighting on a green screen is very tricky, especially if you don't have a long room. Uh, one of the keys to green screening is getting your, your actors, getting your talent as far away from the screen as possible. Uh, well, not as far away, but a decent distance away because this will help eliminate shadows. And as you can see here, as I get beside it, there's not a lot of room between the table and the green screen. So I struggle a little bit with shadows. Again, I remind you, I'm not a professional. Uh, honestly, I could probably take some tips on this lighting setup if uh, if you are a professional or have more knowledge than me and suggestions. I have my, uh, my hair light up here, which is basically on the subject. I have these two operating essentially as my green screen lights and between the two the 1800 watts they give a fairly even coloring across you can see down in the lower uh the lower right hand corner i've got a little bit of dark space but inevitably i, I move in a little bit uh and when i'm in my editing uh, i bring up my brightness uh excuse me i drop my brightness just a little bit uh, and then i bring up my contrast just a little bit and that usually gives me a fairly clean unified green color uh, to be able to use my do my chroma king I then have a couple of halogen lights, which I have mixed feelings about. These, these, I have two of these lights. They came as a pair. And, uh, of course, they're, they're on stands. Uh, I have them set fairly low. And I basically use these as backlights for the subject. So these lights are essentially pointing at the back of the subject that would be in this chair. And this is just a couple of small halogen lights that I think have helped a lot. These lights are so bright, I gotta wear shades. Now the only other problem I have is, a, is, is kind of a front light. So what I, what I do is I've got this rather bright LED when it's turned on. Let me just dim that. So this is just a small uh, battery operated, I think it was $30 LED. I've got to sit on a small tripod. Uh, and this does remarkably well for a fill light. I mean, as you can see on the camera, if I actually turn it all the way up, it, it there's a lot of light in that. And I have two of these, but most of the time in the studio, I don't really need two. So I really just kind of use one. I use it offset to the side so that it doesn't cast any shadows on the green screen from the subject. Uh, but it helps kind of create a good, a good fill light on the face to create some shadows. That is essentially my lighting. 
As for the furniture that I use, uh, you saw my sound equipment is over, uh, my recording equipment is over on a, on a little table. This is also handy. We've done some podcasts in here. And so we'll use these little, uh, these little end table stands for uh, our drinks so that they're not actually in the frame on the table. But it's also good for putting equipment whenever you need to, and it keeps it out of frame. Uh, the table is, it's just a pretty table. It's got a nice brown color. Uh, it was an extra table around. It's not the best. It's got a little bit of wiggle to it, but it works out for most of, well, pretty much everything I've ever needed it for. Now, when I'm doing gameplay, I always keep it back closer to the green screen because obviously I'm going to be sitting here playing a game. Uh, if not, I will usually move it uh, further out and closer to the camera. And uh, often if I have a script or if I have key points I want to talk about, and sometimes you'll see me do this in the videos, I try to avoid it, but the looking down, that's why I'm looking down. I've got this table in front of me, usually with my, my computer set up. With, uh, with a script or with talking points as I go through. Um, of course, there's my tripod. I would show you the camera, but it's in my hand at the moment, and I don't have a second one. But the camera, if you're curious, is a Canon HG10. I actually found this one used. Uh, I uh, bought it from a good friend, so he gave me a really good deal. I spent about $150 on it. You can actually buy these cameras now. It has a 40 gig onboard hard drive, which is wonderful for long recordings. Uh, and you can actually buy this. I think it's the HG20 is the one that's available now. Uh, and it's, it's a wonderful wonderful camera. I mean, as you, as you can see from the stuff that I've done, uh, it's good quality as far as the video camera goes. Yeah, the, the new one I think is around $800 and it comes with an 80 gig onboard hard drive instead of what I have, which is a 40 gig. So that is pretty much it. That's my studio. I have this desk over here, which basically is cluttered with various bits of equipment and a minion. Um, the green screen I bought, if I remember right, was about $80. And it's basically just green muslin, which is pretty cheap fabric, and it came with the stands. Uh, and it's a, uh, what is it, 8 foot by 10 foot. So, uh, you know, it doesn't quite cover my entire wall back there. But when I zoom in a little bit, you know, it works great for the things that I need. So I know, and that's that's the thing with, with green screens. A lot of people have tried to figure out some budget ways, and you can. You can buy those green posters from Walmart at, you know, a dollar a piece, and then use green tape and stick them together, uh, which isn't bad. You're probably going to have to do a little bit more work in post, uh, and maybe a little bit more than just messing with contrast and brightness to try to get those greens close enough to the same color uh, to chroma key them out. But you know, when you're working on a budget, you do what you got to do. That's kind of what I've got here. I'm proud of this studio. I'm happy with the way that it's turned out. I don't know that there's anything I really want to buy to add to it, except maybe the uh, egg crate foam for the walls, just because my quilt batting does look kind of janky. But you guys don't care. You don't see it. And it works great as far as sound canceling. So, and, and I don't know if I finished the point earlier, but, uh, actually with this quilt batting and as good as this studio is, uh, is soundproofed. I typically do not use separate audio recording. I don't do a lapel mic. I don't use my microphone. Uh, this camera has an onboard mic, which usually you do not want to mess with onboard mics because they're just horrible. But this is a decent onboard mic. And there's so little echo here that I basically take my sound file into Audacity. I do a, a, a noise removal of some quiet area to get out of anything in the background. And, and that's about it. And then I do an equalization to bring the lows out a little bit more. Uh, but for the most part, that's all I have to do with the audio. And, you know, I would probably say that it's a 90% quality. That if I were to record separately on that microphone, uh, that would get me to 100% quality. I'm at 90% quality just using this onboard microphone. And it cuts my, uh, it cuts my editing down quite a bit. Uh, because, of course, I've got the sound already matched with the video file. So I'm not trying to match things up. And it's just, it's, it's a lot easier. So a lot easier with very little difference in quality. So that's my basic studio setup. As you can see, uh, I, I've really not invested a whole lot of money. Uh, my big purchases was, were my camera, the lights, and the uh, green screen. Those were my biggest purchases that I actually made for this studio. I already had the laptop, so I didn't have to, I didn't have to spend any extra money on that. Although I would like to uh, have a better laptop. This, this one's a few years old. Rendering takes a while. On the next part, I'm going to do a tutorial basically on how I put the video together. And that's probably going to be a voiceover as I edit. Uh, and you can kind of see a little bit of what I do. Uh, for the most part, again, I'm not a professional. I've learned some, some little tricks and, and tips and things that I'll pass on to you. Uh, if you're an expert at this sort of thing, 
unless you like hearing the sound of my voice, you probably won't get a lot out of it. But I've had, you know, a fair number of other YouTubers who have looked at my videos and they ask me, what do you use? You know, how do you get your green screen looking so good? That's going to be my, my next video for you guys is, is it's basically going to be a short, um, audio video tutorial uh, about how I set up a video. So I hope you look forward to that. All right, well, thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope it was educational to you. Uh, at least you kind of got to see a little bit of what I do and how I do it in my studio. So uh, if you like this studio setup, think your friends would enjoy it, make sure to share it. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to this channel. And until next time, guys, you're amazing, incredible, and don't let anyone tell you differently. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Y'all come back now, yeah? Do 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 do